We know what needs to be done. The solution is on the table, but there's no prepared to come to the table. Well, it's time we let dolphins rule the world. Uh, well, we uh, had a solution, but they shut the bugger down. I find his remarks deeply offensive. Yeah. They should all sit down together and have a nice cup of tea. I give the youngsters solutions, and they do not listen. We know what needs to be done. Well, the solution is to play Dean Saunders up front. And now it's time for the Mark Steele solution. Good evening and welcome to the Mark Steele Solution, the programme where each week I come up with a radical proposal to change all of our lives for the better. And tonight's solution concerns transport. Because with the modern pace of life, everybody is used to having to be somewhere in six and a half minutes' time, so everybody drives around going, come on, eh, 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 get out of the way, move! And I've got so good at swearing and shouting in the middle of a sentence now that I can actually do it and the sentence still makes sense either side of the swearing. So I can be driving around going, come on, bloody hell, move on. I noticed you've been to the air cut. Where do you usually go now? Because I've got other... Look, will you get out of the bloody way, for God's sake? Come on, please, will you? Come on, go on, come on, some of us have got to be coming. You get a bloody tank through there, move, will you? Please, you useless country yokel moron. Come on, clap them as a rule. <laughs> and you can tell how stressed people get by travelling when you go to a place that is much more laid back than one of the English cities, like if you go to Dublin, for example. Now, I've actually stood in a bar in Dublin, and you can tell the people from English cities that are so stressed from travelling, because they come in and they'll go, uh, um, uh, point of Guinness, please, uh, bomber. <laughs> <sighs> <sighs> Ah, uh, right, a point again. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's a fine day today outside, sir. So it is. I think it's a fine day. Today. <laughs> uh, just leave those four or five drops to settle there for a wee while. <laughs> <laughs> Wanna go rushing on a fine day? I'm just gonna go and run me bath there. I'll be back in a minute. <laughs> and you used to London, aren't you? Point again is <laughs> sort off next. <laughs> So the problem with transport is that everyone has to get somewhere in a few minutes' time, but the system of transport we've got is totally incapable of getting you there. So instead of stopping your stress, it actually adds to it. And that's why tonight's proposal is... Transport should only be paid for by people who don't use it. <laughs> now, some people might think that this is unfair, but isn't it far more unfair to expect people to pay for a journey like this? We apologise to customers for the delay to services this morning. This is due to greater intervals between the trains. <laughs> Does anyone know what's happened to the 826? We're still waiting for the 754. Well, that's been cancelled every day this week. It's been replaced by a special hovercraft service via Penge. <laughs> oh, no. So you try the bus. <laughs> Waterloo Bridge, please. Can't accept £10 pound notes, mate. Well, all right, just keep the change. Well, what's happening? Why have we stopped? Everybody off! This one's got a wasp in the engine! I don't believe it! <laughs> so then it's your last resort. Taxi! Where to, Governor? Waterloo Bridge. You'll be lucky. There's an 84-mile toll black. Some bus broken down. Wasp in the engine, they reckon. <laughs> And this is what you're expected to pay for. If you ask anyone what were the most ten stressful experiences in their life, nine of them would involve being stuck in a tunnel or waiting for a bus. Do bus drivers realise that they have this power, that on every bit of road there's one bit that they turn that means that a group of people are standing there going, Yes, it's the bus! It's the bus! It's the bus! <laughs> calm down, calm down, calm down. It might be one of them bloody things that only goes as far as Redbridge Cross. <laughs> no, no, no. And half of you are thinking, please be a 133 or a 159. And the other half thinking, please be a 159 and not a 133. <laughs> and in the end, it doesn't really matter because the thing's full up and goes past at 60 miles an hour with school kids gobbing at you out the window. <laughs> Train journeys, nothing works on a train journey. The ticket machine's busted, the clock's busted, the chocolate machine's busted, the heater in the waiting room's busted, the information board showing fast train to <laughs> front four coaches only. <laughs> and if you try to find anything out, it's like being a journalist outside a cabinet meeting. There is, it's the guard. Excuse me, Excuse me, me, me have, you, have any you any information on the 847 to New Street? I have no comments to make at this juncture. Yes, but we is it likely to arrive within the next hour? I'm sorry, I can give no information whatsoever. Yes, will, will, anybody... will there be any trains at all ever between now and the end of time? I am not in a position to answer that question. Yes, can yes, we have now, if you'll excuse me, I have other customers to annoy. <laughs> 
And as we all know, the excuses are works of genius. In the winter, they say, well, it was snowing. In the autumn, they say, well, there were leaves on the track. It's like if a ferry company said we couldn't send a boat out there, it was soaking wet. <laughs> The trains are filthy. You can't see out of the windows for mud. There's broken glass where the light bulb fell out. There's chewing gum every six inches. There's a puddle of pee under one of the seats. But you put your feet up and the guard comes by going, Oi, get your feet off of there. Someone's got to sit on that glass. <laughs> and every railway line has got one place where the train always stops. Maybe it'll be this little bit of clearing by the woods, or another line it'll be that bit by a home base car park. <laughs> and every day as it's getting there, it's slowing down, and everyone's, please, please, please don't stop today. And sometimes it goes, mm, please, please, yeah. oh, thank God. <laughs> but usually it just stops. And then it makes that irritating noise after a couple of minutes where it goes, <laughs> the four phases of annoyance. Phase one, two minutes. Phase two, five minutes. <laughs> Ten minutes. <sighs> oh, my goodness sake! We did this yesterday, you know. Oh, Two thousand pounds I paid for my bloody season ticket. I'd have them eaten by leopards. <laughs> Hi, Nigel. Listen, I'm going to be late. Steve, sorry, I'm Hello, sorry. Hello, Ryan. Looks like I'm going to be late. I'm going to be late again. And by the final phase, it's as if you're in the trenches in World War I. <laughs> How long have we been here now, Sergeant? It's the 19th of May, sir. That makes it three whole months. <laughs> they say we'll be at Seven Oaks by Christmas. <laughs> I said that last year, so... <laughs> Johnson is cracking up. <laughs> the rats! Rats! The rats! Take it easy, son. He'll be all right. They say we'll be at Seven Oaks by Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if this is the right time, but I've been scribbling a poem. <laughs> Go on, sir. Let's hear it. <clears throat> Propped upright... Staring grimly down the track, the wounded lie despairing in the luggage rack. <laughs> the general, with his timetable, keeps them in the dark. They reach their final resting place, that bit by home base car park. <laughs> <laughs> And anyone who's ever been to London will know the misery of travelling on the underground. The lift's busted. The escalator's busted. I expect one day you'll get there and they'll go, sorry, mate, the stairs are busted, and they give you a shovel and you have to dig your way down. <laughs> and there's another thing. Transport can hardly be described as safe. And yet, whenever there's a disaster, it's always the same. Minister, in the light of last night's tragic events, do you accept that government cuts are to blame? On the contrary, you can't solve problems simply by throwing money at them. The less we spend on safety, the more vigilant the community as a whole becomes. But, Minister, the accident report clearly states that the signalling system on this section of the track hadn't been updated since 1781. <laughs> and it was, in fact, designed for a canal. <laughs> this must have had something to do with the accident. On the contrary, we have to wait for the inquiry before jumping to conclusions. The system is perfectly adequate, provided the lock gate is opened and properly oiled. <laughs> Some people might argue that it's not unfair to make passengers pay because however miserable transport might be, they're the ones who want to get from A to B, so they're the ones who should pay. But most people don't want to get from A to B. They have to. They're travelling to an office or a factory or taking the kids to school. In other words, they're doing something to benefit the rest of us. And they endure all this misery on the way, and then they have to pay. It's as if Neil Armstrong had got to the moon and said, this is one giant leap for mankind, and then NASA had said, yeah, and it's one big fare you've got to pay us and all, because you've only got a single and you can't come back on a Friday. 40 million quid. <laughs> So, clearly, the idea of people paying for the transport that they use is ridiculous. 
The only question is what do we put in its place? Now, one alternative is, of course, to have your own car. This is warm, it leaves when you want to, you can put a funny sticker on the back. What more do you want? But, of course, cars can be the most stressful form of transport of all, because every journey involves a traffic jam, and you start to hate every other driver in the world, and you get stuck behind someone at a junction, and they won't pull out, and you're going, come on, please, come on, move, and they're going, no, not yet, no, no, and you're going, come on, you come on, move, you get four of us out there, and they're going, no, better be safe than sorry, not yet, no, 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 word has it, there's a stagecoach coming down from Exeter, <laughs> And you get stuck behind these people on these little A roads and you can't get past because there's a tractor coming the other way and there's some little bloke driving along in a mini metro always with a hat on inside his car. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Come on, move! And they go, nee, come on! And they get to a leaf in the road and go, ka ding ka ding ka ding and indicate to go around it. And there's a plane going overhead so they slow down to make sure they can get through the gap. And you're going, come on, the contract, move, move! And they get to the speed bumps in the cities and you can take these about 35 in third gear usually but these people go, eh! Stop the car, get out and pick the bloody thing up and take it <laughs> And I'll be like grabbing hold of these people in a traffic jam and shouting at them and going, Listen, have you never ever wondered why it is that everywhere you go in this stupid car there is this huge queue of traffic that goes for miles and miles and miles behind you? And never ever in your life has there ever been a single isolated vehicle in front, ever, ever. Have you never stopped to wonder why? <laughs> Would they just go, lucky, I suppose? <laughs> and then they say, well, you don't get there any quicker, driving like a madman. Like, of course I bloody do. If I don't get there any quicker, why is it then that Nigel Mansell was the world driving champion and not Mrs McGinty, 89, from Shrewsbury? Eh? <laughs> and, of course, with cars, you're still paying for your own misery, except you pay three times over. First to buy the thing, then for the petrol, and then for all the extras like tax and repairs and MOT and insurance. And motor insurance is such a rip-off. At least if you give protection money to the Mafia, they actually bother to protect you. Otherwise, you'd get this happening. Godfather, for years I pay you every week. Now the uh, Rossetti brothers set a fire to my car, spit in my face, insulted the memory of my sister's cat. <laughs> and yet you are telling me you can do nothing for me. Why? Juliano, I'm your friend. I hope you have to lose your 60% no claims bonus, huh? <laughs> then I have to charge you double, don't make me do this to you. Oh, Mr. Corleone, I have loved you like my own father. Now I have lost everything. Do me a favor, Juliano. Check the policy. The vehicle shall be protected at all times by an alarm conforming to a minimum British standard. As defined in Regulation 461.2 in Clause 13C above. Godfather, all I ask is that you will teach the Rossetti brothers a lesson. Give me some respect, Oya. There's an excess clause. You have to beat up the first two yourself. <laughs> and so clearly cars are not the answer. But what other alternatives are there? One alternative some people try to the present system of paying for the transport you use is to fiddle the fares. Uh, I used to do this when I was unemployed and I'd it all worked out so that I'd get to the station, I'd make it look as if I was in a rush and then I'd pile straight past onto the platform, that was usually easy, and then uh, make sure at the other end that I had two bits of paper, one in each hand, and I'd just rush straight past the ticket collector, making it look as if I was fumbling around for my ticket, and then by the time they realise that you haven't got one, you're about ten yards past, and they're going, oi, come back here, come back here, and then you just run, easy, right? <laughs> And what used to make me laugh was watching the amateur fair fiddlers who get it all right and they get about ten yards past and the bloke will go, Oi, you come back here! And then they go back! <laughs> oh, no! Don't go back! You've done the difficult bit! Just run, for Christ's sake! Come on, he's about 90, he's not going to catch you! But come on, what's the matter with you? And besides, he's not going to leave his post and let millions pass, is he? Just go! It'd be like if someone escaped from cold, it's got into Switzerland, heard the commandant and went, Oh, I better go back and explain myself to the guard! <laughs> But now they've taken all the fun out of fair fiddling because they've got automatic barriers and on-the-spot fines and adverts like this. If you don't get a ticket, you risk more than a fine. You risk losing the respect of your neighbours, your colleagues at work and even your mates down the pub. <laughs> Point of lager, Elf. Uh, yeah, cheers. Uh, what about you, Margaret? Oh, yeah, lovely, thanks. I'm not buying you one, you thieving fair dodger who contributed to British Rail's £30 million lost revenue last year alone! And if it's a second offence, you may even go to prison. And don't expect any respect even from your fellow inmates. 
What are you in for, Nosha? Murder joke! Oh, aye. And what about you? I got on at Reading, but told the inspector I'd started my journey at Didcot. <laughs> Some light you make me suck. Let's give him a kicking joke! Uh, so remember, for the sake of a 30 pence ticket, you could even lose the respect of your own mother. Son, I have no son. <laughs> So clearly, then, the only answer is that transport should only be paid for by people who don't use it. But before we hear how the Mark Steele solution would work, let's find out what the ordinary man in the cul-de-sac thinks. Live from number nine, Begonia Close, it's Mr Cul-de-sac. This is the sound, this is the sound of the summer. Transports don't talk to me about transport. They were going to put one of them road signs near here. And I said, oh, I'm not having it. Do you know there's over 2,000 signs already in Britain telling you where Sheffield is? I've never been there once. It's a waste of ratepayers' money. It's an outrage. I went to the railway station the other day. They said, there's no trains. There's a person on the track. I said, well, drive over him then. Some of us have got to get to the barbers at half past ten. £82 just to get to Glasgow out of the Scottish. I've all that every day. I thought they were all supposed to be on the dole. It's an outrage. <laughs> they were going to build a bus shelter on the corner. I said, it's a waste of ratepayers' money. All that expense just to keep a bus dry, they could have spent that money hanging people. <laughs> but what about the Channel Tunnel? I said, oh, I'm not going down there. You'll open the window for a breath of fresh air and get an octopus in your lap. What are they like? <laughs> but look at these new ticket barriers they keep putting up. They should put one up in my garden. Stop next door's rabbit coming over here dropping its pellets all over me marigolds. <laughs> I've got a mind to go around there in a Lancaster bomber and drop a doodle bug down the chimney. Oh, different then. I knew this policeman once said he had a panda car. I said, haven't you got better things to do than take zoo animals out for a ride all day long? <laughs> No wonder they don't breed. I went along to Liverpool Street. I said, get out of my station. They said, what are you talking about, Mr Cul-de-sac? I said, I bought it for £200 plus Old Kent Road. <laughs> I've been writing some letters to the transport people. Here they are, dear transport people. Yesterday I got on one of your trains. It went past a plastic spider and a luminous skull, ended up back where it started. How am I supposed to get to the shop? <laughs> Dear transport people, it says in the paper you're building a roundabout in the middle of the road. Have you gone mad? Next thing you'll be putting swings in the middle of the M6. It's an outrage. <laughs> Here's another one. Dear transport people, why, oh, why, oh, why, oh, why, oh, why, oh, why, oh, why? That's as far as I've got with that one, but it's coming on, don't you think? <laughs> Thank you, Mr Cul-de-sac. And so, how would our system work? Well, it's simple. If you get on a bus or a train, it's free. If you don't, you pay for it. So if you're sitting at home, not having to put up with the misery of transport, then this happens. Any more fears, please? Oh, oh yeah, now, uh, let's see. Uh, oh, I didn't go on a bus today, so uh, here you are. <laughs> Thank you. And what about the train, sir? Well, here, well, you've got no worries there. Here's my season ticket. Entitles me not to go anywhere for a month. <laughs> <laughs> All right, no, sir. Hold on tight. Okay. And if you had anyone who tried to get away without paying, then this happens. Yeah. Uh, bloody hell's this? Any more fares, please? Uh, no, we, uh, we went somewhere today, didn't we, dear? That's right, yeah. We went to um, Newcastle. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Let's hear a Geordie accent, then. You better tell him the truth, dear. No, it's all right. Uh, leave it to me. Uh, right, uh, Geordie, yeah? Uh... OK, Mr Mandela, we're letting you out of prison. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, Mr Conductor. <laughs> I have no husband. <laughs> And under our system, you wouldn't have to cut services. Because the way it works at the moment, if the cost of running transport goes up, the only way to get the money is to increase the fares, which means less people use it. So they put the fares up again. So then even less people use it. So then they say, well, there's hardly anyone on it now. We might as well scrap it. <laughs> or else you end up with a bus service that's like the sort you get in a country village. Excuse me, um, when's the next bus to Didlington? Bus? <laughs> Yes, uh, there must be a bus into town. Bus, you say? I don't know about bus. I tell you what, mind. Would you have it that if Witch and Toy should fall where there be a full moon, a great green dragon comes roaring through the village? <laughs> I never see it, mind. No, but they do say that many years ago, the old lady who lived in the post office stood too near its jaws, whereon it did swallow her up with a great gshh noise. <laughs> And spat her out at Chudbury Market. 
<laughs> but then you get into city trains that are packed with people sitting in the sink at one end, while at the other end there's four first-class carriages with two people and a laptop computer. <laughs> And the buffet car is like the Berlin Wall used to be. It's just this border where you can look across and go, oh, they all seem to be warm and comfortable over there. <laughs> but if you go too far near the other side, a guard comes round and goes, come on, get back, this isn't for the likes of you. I'm looking forward to the day when it stormed through to the other side and Kate Adis stood there going, what a marvellous day for democracy as they help themselves, <laughs> help themselves to the little plump cushion. Uh, another advantage with our system is the process of paying itself. Because under the old way of doing things, even that involves misery. You turn up to the station and you can't buy a ticket even when you want to. Because the ticket window's shut and there's a notice written on a bit of cardboard saying we are shut with shut spelt wrong. <laughs> Ticket machine's busted. So you keep putting your money in and it keeps coming out the bottom and it's too high to even give it a good kick in. <laughs> and on London Underground, if you do get a ticket, you get to the other end, put it in the barrier and it comes up, dilly, 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 seek assistance, seek assistance. And 15 armed guards arrive behind you going, that's the Levita, fair dodger. <laughs> and the most stupid thing of all about all this is that you're trying to buy this ticket at the time when you're most in a rush. Because you're just about to travel somewhere. Under our system, you only buy a ticket when you're not going anywhere. So you've got plenty of time to do it. <laughs> and so, under our system, the fares would be cheaper, the services wouldn't be cut, there'd be no empty planes or first-class compartments, you'd pay when you had the time to pay, the roads would be clearer, and above all, you wouldn't be adding insult to injury by asking the people who suffer the misery of travelling to pay for it as well. And on top of all that, of course, if you did want to travel anywhere just for leisure, it would be free. And so, with the Mark Steel solution in place, what would a typical train journey be like? <laughs> Ah. Oh, we stopped outside the car park at home base. Well, that's marvellous. With all the money I've saved, I can nip in and buy myself a shelving unit. Anybody want anything? Oh, no, thanks. We'll just sit here and enjoy the scenery, eh? <laughs> we never used to go nowhere, you know. Hey, we couldn't afford the trains. And if we tried driving, we'd hardly be out of Stitchford before we'd get stuck behind some bloke in an hat. Funny, that. I used to drive everywhere in a hat. <laughs> then the villagers bought me a Ferrari with the accelerator stuck down. <laughs> I won't do less than 120, so I gave up driving, now I take the train. Why did they buy you a Ferrari? Lucky, I suppose. <laughs> I don't know if this is the right time, but I've been scribbling a poem. Go on, sir. Let's hear it. <clears throat> Sat comfy, spared shoving and pushing. Their heads relaxed on a little plump cushion. <laughs> and at the village bus stop. Does anyone know when the next bus to Diddlington leaves? Bus? You won't get one of those to Diddlington. No, we had so much money in the kitty, we chartered a plane to leave once a week. <laughs> you can get that for nothing. And even motor insurance would be better. Hey, Juliano, I took care of the Rossetti brothers. They're sleeping on the home base car park, huh? <laughs> no claims bonus. But before they went, they said your sister's cat was never ugly. <laughs> Thank you, God the Father. I will honour you like a son. Son? I have a lovely son. <laughs> and the next time that a Londoner went to Dublin... Point of Guinness, please. Ah, point of Guinness, you say. It's a fine day today, sure, I think you'll find. Ah, yeah, right there, barman. I'll tell you what. Why don't you go along and run yourself a nice hot bath? <laughs> I'm just going to stay here and watch these four or five drops settle for a wee while. <laughs>